Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Today, we paint my first Death Guard Plague Marine. I really like weathering when it comes to Gunpla, but I'm kinda scared to like weather miniatures. I'm not even good at, I feel like I'm not even good at basic painting, so weathering miniatures is like kinda scary for me. Also, Geekolodeon Studios, my main miniature client, doesn't really like weathered miniatures. So this is actually my first Plague Marine, my first like model that is part of my army, my actual personal army because my army is Death Guard and Admech and my sons is the Primaris Ultramarine. So I also have a few Nurgle models but this is my actual army. It took me around 7 months or 8 months of practicing on commission works before I actually painted my own. So we're painting this icon bearer the same way in which how I painted the Plague Burst Crawler if you saw that video. So we're doing a rust undercoat and the idea is to paint over this rust undercoat later. So is it worth it to do a rust undercoat on a model? We shall see. First, we do lazy washing with inks to bring back a bit of the details and to give a bit more contrast, also to tone down our rust undercoat. I applied a couple of thin coats, letting dry in between coats. So we're painting with olive greens. I start with medium green, that would be the darkest, and then olive green and golden olive for the, not the highlights, but the lightest part of the armor. I laid down all the paints already on my red grass wet palette because the idea here is to paint the lightest golden olive on top of the armor and the darkest like medium olive at the bottom parts of the armor. This would be like creating a zenithal look or zenithal effect wherein there's like a source of light on the upper right part or area of the model. So it's basically on the darker parts of the armor, we use medium olive and then golden olive on the lighter parts. So we laid down all the paint so that we could flip flop from whatever color we need depending on the area of the armor. Also the manner of painting these greens is via stippling in a way because I don't want a smooth armor, Nurgle won't be proud. Now we use light sea gray. I like it so much because it's light, it's sea, and it's gray. So we mix the light sea gray with our golden olive so that it will be our pre-highlight color. But our highlight color would be light sea gray. Later in the painting process, I added a bit of white gray for extreme highlights, especially on the uppermost areas of the armor. Even the highlights, the light sea gray highlights, were painted via like a stippling motion so that we create a rough, really rough texture on the armor because I think Nurgle won't like super smooth armor. So at the start of the video, I asked, is it worth it to do a rust undercoat on a model? I think for Death Guard, it is. Also, watch until the end of the video because I'm going to reveal the best rust paint ever.
the trickiest part of the model to paint was the skin parts the like the monster parts because we did a rust undercoat so i was really curious if it will look okay over the rust undercoat but while i, I was painting the model i guess it turned out okay the nocturna devil red is super awesome it's like a dark magenta color so it was great even for like the handle of the banner so it was an awesome paint i will always use it for my death guard i added glaze medium with a medium flesh i have a lot of videos on glazing but this one i did not record on video Now we paint the iron parts. This one, I was confident that if I leave areas of the rust undercoat, it will look awesome. And it did. I used basalt gray as our like base color for the iron parts. It's lighter than German gray, but I think it's a bit darker than London gray. Then I mixed the basalt gray with white gray and created different tones of grays. As we go lighter, I ended up using even white for the extreme highlights. I also use black glaze here. If you've seen my video on using the black glaze paint, it's awesome to create shades and shadows on like this iron parts. Now we paint the copper trims. This is what made the rust undercoat, at least for Death Guard, very much worth it. Now it's a matter of just painting highlights on the rust undercoat so that it looks like copper. Now the rust undercoat experiment turned out great. Now I have an idea on how to paint the copper parts of the Void Dragon. So now it's a matter of mixing ice yellow, ivory, or even white to the base colors that we used previously earlier in the video so that we push the contrast of the model. Also, we use a lot of ink, sepia, black green, black, and even flesh ink wash to the model so that we like push the contrast or the shadows of the model. I prefer inks over washes, Vallejo washes, because they remain transparent even over dark backgrounds and they will never fog those dark backgrounds. Now we are about done and we are going to reveal the best rust paint ever. Vallejo doesn't have like an orange ink and all of the rust washes like from the model wash to the mecha weathering washes are great, are awesome but I'm about to reveal to you the best rust paint ever and it's the clear orange. Also I mix blue green, you could also use turquoise and mix it over the verdigris, the game effects verdigris because I find it too pale. Now back to the best rust paint ever and it's the model color clear orange. It's very clear <laughs> why the clear orange is the best rust paint ever because it's more opaque than washes yet it's clear it's more transparent than orange paint. The clear orange will simply complement the armor part 
in which you place it on top of and it's very nice in terms of blending it you could thin it with thinner or water so that it becomes a wash it has the consistency of air paints like game air model air and mecha colors and you just have to add a bit of water if you want to make a wash out of it that's it we're done i hope you like the video do like comment subscribe and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our discord community saludos